Every time I see our children, I see so much hope and promise in them. My work at the Ministry of Education is so meaningful. I want to help every child succeed. And that's very important to me. Everyone would agree that education empowers an individual, develops competencies and builds character. It also provides the foundation for good careers and learning throughout life. Our education system is known for its high standards, especially in mathematics and science. Our students also do well in music, the arts and sports. Efforts are made to give our students the opportunities to realise their potential and take different pathways to success. But education goes beyond having good grades. It involves building character and instilling the values in our students so they can go on to lead meaningful and fulfilling lives. Hi, Minister. How are you? I'm good. Welcome. We are Alliance City, but some are saying that we are in fact populated with tiger moms and dads, with all the tuition and enrichment classes loaded on them. So, Minister, would it be fair to say that Singaporeans are being too kiasu? As a parent myself, I fully appreciate how every parent wants the best for his or her child. Now, this is not a bad thing. In fact, I will be very concerned if parents do not show any concern about their children's education. We have to start by recognising that every child is different in interest, in temperament, in strength. But every child can learn. The question is, how do we help every child to be at their best? And this is exactly what my colleagues and I at the Ministry seek to do. In the case of tuition, some will do with extra help. But if a child is doing well, giving extra lessons, extra enrichment classes may be counterproductive. Because first, the child gets bored because they have seen the material. Second, there's only 24 hours a day. So time spent on tuition means time taken away from activities which are useful. For instance, learning music, learning to play a sports, learning arts, making friends, having fun. Finally, if a child is doing well, there is a danger that he develops a crutch mentality, that he has to depend on someone else to teach him all the time. In future, what we want are adults who are independent, resourceful persons. In a recent survey, it was found that many parents did not believe that the extra help resulted in a better grade. But nevertheless, they decided they had to do it because they don't want to someone, miss out. someone else <laughs> will do it. It's doing it. Mm. Yeah. So it begs the question: How come we are so compelled to want to keep up with each other? Why is there such a need to make sure that our kids are doing so well, or having their weaknesses supplemented, so to speak? Is it because there's such a demand for the right grades? Is that there's such a focus on schools delivering the right sort of grades and rankings, and for the teachers to be able to complete the syllabus and curriculum? I think it's a good thing that you know, we are a high aspiration society. But that said, I have abolished the ranking of schools. I no longer publish the names of the top PSLE students. In our primary school now, if you get a report card from the school, it no longer just says the child gets this grade or that grade. In fact, we have moved to what we call a holistic assessment. It tells you about the various aspects, the social emotional aspects of a child's learning in school. So it is a much more well-rounded program and assessment. I totally agree with everything that you said. In fact, the abolishment of the PSLE scores is a great decision that you made. My question is that it's fine that we put on the whole idea of a holistic education, but the problem is the main bulk of society still only focuses on the green. For me personally, I always loved doing music. I loved regular activities. I was very heavily involved. But that being said, 
I still felt a very, very heavy need to do well in grades first. Mm. So even if you did well at CCA, I was water polo captain, I was in drama, I was in swimming, I went to sports school, but somehow if you go to your family functions, your family mm. reunions, and you still said that, you know, I didn't go to JC or I didn't do well, you mm. still get judged. It's about educating not only the students but the society in becoming more accepting of other talents and other views. Like Einstein has this very beautiful quote that says, everyone is a genius, but if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its life thinking that it is dumb. So to me, I think that's something that we need to address is in the fact that we need to give more emphasis to things like CCAs. I, I can't agree with you more. <laughs> we need a mindset change in our society in terms of respecting every individual Okay, so Narelle, from your experience at school, what do you think need to change, you know, so that we move the focus a little bit away from grades? The biggest thing that changed my views was when people started giving me recognition for the things that I liked to do, when I followed my passion, and they came up to me and be like, oh, I'm so proud of you for doing that. And immediately I was like, you are? <laughs> you know, and I think something as little as that would really change the mentality because it doesn't just start from school. It starts from the kids around you. When kids are impressed that you are good at your sport, when kids, when even teachers, you know, they give you the opportunity to leave class early, to go for your training or to go for your competitions. And simple things like this makes a huge difference. So grades are not completely redundant. Right? Yes. It's, it's striking that balance, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, grades are like the readings on the speedometer when you're driving. It tells you how far you have travelled and how fast you have travelled. So in the same way, the grades tell us how fast the student has learned and how much the student has learned. So that provides a good feedback to the students so that they can see where they can improve, provide good feedback to the parents and the teachers. And in that way, we can customise the learning a little better. It also helps us to maintain a certain standard and rigour in the system so that we know that when someone has passed a particular level, we're confident that he's ready to go on. And in that way, we can help every child learn better. Students do get a testimonial. It's about what the student has done over the last few years. And this goes from primary school. So when a teacher goes in to find out more about a student, what the student did in primary school, and I'm a secondary school teacher, I'm able to find out what his or her achievements are. I can sense that there's a sea of change happening. The waves just kind of slowly moving. But the reality is, a lot of parents out there are still very obsessed over grades. And to do that, back to tuition, enrichment classes loaded on them, those who can afford it can help their children. But the lower income families, they would be at a disadvantage, wouldn't they? So what kind of support do we have for these lower income families who may fall behind? We want to make sure that every child has good access to educational opportunities, mm. regardless of their family circumstances, regardless of the financial ability of the family. And in fact, we resource schools with greater needs more than the average school. We also have a range of programs to help students from weaker backgrounds. So for instance, at the point of entry into primary one, our teachers make an assessment on the readiness of the students in reading and in mathematics. And we have a learning support program for both areas to help them build you know, a strong foundation so that they can continue to learn. We started it, it was so successful, I decided to do it all the way to primary six and into the secondary school. We have special financial assistance for students. We have um, self-help groups who come in. And more recently, I have expanded all our student care centres. And the student care centres are run by non-profit organisations, sometimes by volunteer welfare organisations and they provide a very good environment for the students to go to, uh, compared to many other places, and we're doing a lot more compared to the past. And I'm confident that we will continue to provide opportunities for everyone, regardless of their family's financial circumstances. I've seen many children from low-income families who have done really well. And one of the reasons is because the teachers have injected an interest for studying and students' willingness to want to learn. So you're saying tuition is not necessary? Well, we've seen students who have not gone to tuition and excelled in their studies. My background, my family, there are four girls and we come from a very poor background. My father, he believes that education is your passport to get out of poverty, your passport to open up opportunities. And we didn't go through any tuition and yet all four of us went through university. I think it's the survivor instinct. You need to work hard and because everyone else has an advantage over you, they can go to tuition and all that and you don't have that. So if let's say 
we don't have the money to go through tuition, then it's totally up to you. You have to work hard. Back to my generation, we found that we didn't do too badly. We were poor, we were not rich people. I came from a place where you know, my father worked in the British Army and, and I lived in a rent control house. And if you look at all the uh, surveys, developed countries, many of the richer people do better in education and the poorer people don't do that well in education. What is important to us is that we have this ability to get out of this vicious circle. Yeah. But it's the current education system. Has it put a lot of stress on parents, teachers, students? Yeah. What do you think? Well, stress, in fact, is one of the most commonly cited issues in education. That's right. And I'll say that not just in Singapore, but all over the world. A certain amount of stress is useful in that it keeps us sharp and alert. But excessive stress is counterproductive and even harmful. Stress comes from many different sources. One is excessive amount of work. So for that, we're trying to cut down on the amount of homework that are unnecessary. We now have fairly strict guidelines to our schools on the amount of homework that they can give their students. It is about giving the right things, not giving a lot of things. Yes. The second source of stress is when questions are set at too difficult a level. And we do have some of those. And that's the reason why I decided to release the PSLE papers. Because I noticed that parents were buying test papers from other schools in the belief that the harder the questions, the better it is for the students. But that is not the standard that we set for PSLE. And I decided that we will make clear what is the standard expected of PSLE, what is the standard expected at O level and at A levels. Now, the third source of stress is comparison. I meet students very often, I talk to them about their experience. One girl told me that she got 80 marks for her test. And her parents said, oh, that's good, but your cousin got 85. So she said, I felt motivated, I decided to work harder. So the next round, I got 85. Went back happily and told dad and mom that I got 85 now. And her parents said, but your cousin now got 90. Oh, no. <laughs> so second time round, she decided, yes, I will work harder. And then the third time, she got 90. And now, guess what? She got full marks. She said, well, your cousin got full marks. So she said, on the third occasion, she felt stressed, felt demoralised. Mm. I think the parents wanted to motivate her to try and do better. That if your cousin can do it, you can do it. But unfortunately, I think when you do it repeatedly, it signals something else, that you are not good enough. And it's very stressful for the child. Now, the fourth source of stress is really expectations. The higher our expectations, the greater the stress. I think it is good for parents and teachers to set high expectations that our students can learn, that they are capable of challenging themselves or stretching themselves. But it has to be set at the correct level. Do you remember that question that was floating around on Facebook, the primary five student question about birthday? birthday? I didn't get it. I don't know how many of you got it. Yeah. That's where I think you know, the social media sometimes creates that anxiety. Mm -hmm. That question is not a primary yeah. five question. Mm -hmm. It's a question for a mathematics Olympiad. You know, very, very select group of bright students who are just extremely good in math and they take part in those activities. Many of us can solve those sorts of problems. Okay, that's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going back to question. You're really intelligent, Melissa.